One point what bothered me uh, a little bit was where the chefs were cooking for the technique right, and for the wow effect. And it was not necessarily about the taste, the, the taste the and flavor. the ingredients. Taste is very important. Obviously, you have to start with with food tasting good and where, where there's sort of sky's the limit if, if that's where you're starting off or you're jumping off from, but food has to taste good. Equipment technology has always been a part of the kitchen. People say, oh, you're, you know, you have this immersion circulator, you do this weird stuff. Well, you have a food processor. Do you want us to, <laughs> yes. what's wrong with that? You know, yes. you want me to just throw a spear at my meal? I mean, <laughs> you have to understand there's always been a relationship between the kitchen and technology. And again, one is not right and one is not wrong. Do you have to cook long time? Eh, no, we're almost there. Then what are we doing with those We're gonna ones? peel, we're just gonna peel them. We peel them, okay. And then we're gonna dress them with a little bit of uh, olive oil, which is, which is very nice. You want me to get out of the way? No, no, no. I have, I have my, my way of doing it. So this is actually what we're doing here. It's pretty traditional in a sense. Absolutely. Except for the consomme uh, where you use the, you say, centrifuge? The centrifuge, yep. Wow. That's, that's nice. Yeah, I mean, it's unbelievable. Can you see, we have, it comes, it comes out very easily. Very easily, yeah. Yeah, which is nice. My hope is, is when, when people come to WD-50, I just want them to say, it made me think. And I think that I hope that, that our legacy is that we leave, leave the industry a little bit better than, than we found it. I think in talking with Eric, there very much is a dialectic because we both come from the same place. And, and I may have gone a little bit off this way and he may be more of a traditionalist, but Eric is as equally curious as I am. So the last, uh, the last ingredient to our dish is a tarragon. Tarragon. It's a, it's a tarragon oil. So you made a tarragon. We you made, made it, it. We made a tarragon made oil, and I think that the tarragon complements the the sherry, the, the sherry. consomme very well. So as soon as that oil hits the hot wow, broth, it it's too. gonna aromatize, yes. and, and it, it's gonna add to the smells, the experience. I was fortunate enough to have people explain to me early on that as food is arriving, it, you begin to smell it first, you begin to then look at it. You're halfway there if someone can look at a plate and smile because they've already decided in a way that they like it. Okay, so, so we've cooked the eggs. Now we're just warming them back up. So, so you need- We, we uh, just want to heat the egg through and I, and I don't want to I don't want to cook the egg anymore. We're looking for uh, like tea water. You want like one, two, three, four, five. Generally speaking, that's, that's tea water. More it's or hot, less. hot tea water. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going back to the cocktail. <laughs> so I was saying, yes, you, you have this clientele who comes to WD50, they come for the whole experience. And then you decided to open Alder. So what is the difference in between Alder and WD50? Well, at Alder, we're trying to offer a more casual experience. Okay. We don't have a tasting menu. We don't take reservations right now. So in terms of creativity, when are you creative? Do you dedicate time to creativity? Do you work in collaboration with your team? You have to allocate time to be creative. creative. We try to create an environment where the cooks work, where they can have ideas where they can say, chef, I have an idea, I want to try this, I want to try that. Did you ever go to work and have Robichon say, so what do you think? Uh, he asked me for my opinion when I did something wrong. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's nice. I think that it's nice that we can create that atmosphere, that environment where they can feel like they can contribute. And, and yourself, I mean, you have two restaurants, you're married, you have uh, yeah, two children. Yeah, married, two, two kids. Two kids. Yep. I mean, you're busy. Uh, you st still find time for yourself? Uh, <laughs> not right now. I mean, to, to create potentially. <laughs> no, or, I, of course, or... you have to. You have to find time. You know, my mother told me something once. She said, "You can't decide to be creative." She said it doesn't work like that. So you have to be ready for when it happens. To me, it comes as, as a flash, like an image yeah. or something. Is it the same for you? Sometimes, sometimes the way the light is coming through the window or something, and it gives you an idea how to put food on a plate. You see the water tower and you go, I, I, I can make a beet shape like that, it would be beautiful. And you think, well, on the plate, that might look great. It looks like a pencil, so now can we put a vegetable in a pencil sharpener? And, you know, why not, you know? Creativity is a great motivation for chefs to advance. And uh, uh, I don't see cooking being exciting if we are not able to create. So, so we are going to plate? Yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna take some mushrooms. Okay. It's unbelievable. Yeah, they're nice. I'm, I'm yeah, they're very nice. Take some celery. I think that looks nice, right? Yeah, yeah perfect. Looks, yeah. This looks great as well. So I'm testing that consomme that actually delicious. And then maybe you wanna put just a little bit of salt on top of the egg. Yep. Well, so we are going to um, Should we eat? go to the table? Yeah, let's go to the table. Fantastic. Hello, I'm Eric Ripper, 
host of On The Table only on the Reserve channel. If you like my show, hit the subscribe button below and hit the thumbs up if you like my show.